guys welcome we're here with the uh, another edition of talking preps uh, a little different this week guys uh, the coronavirus is taking high school sports school nba ncaa march madness everything's off um it's been weird the last couple of days not seeing any live sports i watched uh, several old <laughs> games from 2007 and 8 on espn i saw jerry mcnamara play for syracuse for the first time in forever but um it looks like the state association, NCHSA, is out until at least April 6th. And the private schools are out until further notice. North Carolina public schools are closed for two weeks. Coach Mitchell, have you seen anything like this ever in your career? Never. Never at all. I mean, I can remember when I was like in middle school, they canceled our, our eighth grade basketball season because of measles. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the school wasn't canceled. It wasn't anything like that. That's the only thing in my whole life that I can remember actually shutting things down. So no, I've never seen anything like this. Now, you guys are having a food drive. We're filming this on Sunday. You're having a food drive on Monday to, to try to provide meals for people. How serious is that for many children in, in CMS, not being able to get that breakfast and lunch? I think it's a huge problem. You know, over the summer, CMS provides um, different schools where kids can come in and get meals all summer long. And before Christmas break, a lot of schools send food home with kids and We've never had a situation right now where, you know, you can't open up the cafeterias for kids to come in and get those lunches because of what's going on. So um, South Mech has, has created a food drive. So tomorrow morning from eight to 12, families can drive through and it's really gonna be a drop off. You don't even have to come in. You drive through the circle, you drop off your bag of groceries. We're gonna have volunteers that, that collect them and sort them out and rebag them. And then from 12 o'clock to two o'clock tomorrow, then families can come back through and the families in need in the area can come back and, and pick up some food for the for the week or the two weeks. Okay, when well she says tomorrow, I'm hoping I'm gonna get this out in time. She means Monday, Mar uh, March 16th. Right. And uh, so you can definitely get food. Coach Lewis, um, just your reaction to everything that's happened. Um, I just can't imagine anything like this ever. Uh, you know, how, how, how's it been for you? Well, I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime. And I just saw now, you know, especially with being sort of cooped in and um, especially everything being canceled, I think that's really a change. When we've had other national tragedies before, it mm -hmm. really didn't stop other things from occurring. But this basically is stopping the economy in its tracks at every level. It's Absolutely. just not sports, but it's everything. I mean, I just saw that in Ohio that they banned you know, anybody from going to a bar or restaurant up in Massachusetts, they've done the same and no public gathering over 25 people or more. So it's really getting to hit home and getting serious. Yeah, I was watching some church service this morning and uh, it was weird to see the church service and nobody in the stands, and they're, you know, still giving them full church service. Randall, are your clients calling you to work out? I mean, what's, what's the situation with you? I mean, everybody, uh, people just maybe just want to do one-on-one -on -one or just not at all? No, everybody's pretty much been still wanting to get in the gym. You know, I have to be a little bit more cautious, though, making sure everybody washes their hands before and after workouts, wiping off the balls. Uh, mm -hmm. I only had one client that didn't want to come in. So really it's just about, you know, what gyms are still going to be open for us to use the next couple of weeks. But, you know, the, the calls have still started to come because kids being in the house for two weeks with nothing to do, <laughs> it's not really going to work. So, you know, we're, gonna, we're just going to figure it out as we go. What can kids do at home, though, to kind of stay sharp? You know, they can't get to Randall Clark. What can I do to stay sharp during this hiatus? How um, long is I'm going. We're, I'm going to make some some ball handling and shooting videos for the for the week for people to use. You know, that can't necessarily get into the gym. Uh, you know, some cardio exercises for people to do. Um, some strength work that you can do at home without really needing. So there are going to be things that you don't necessarily have to be in the gym for that you can do at home. That that are, we'll be we'll be sending out over the next two weeks also. And how do people see those? Uh, you can you can you know follow us on Instagram, OWE Basketball. Um, a lot of them will be posted on there, or just send me an email directly at OWE Basketball at gmail dot com as well. There it is. And, All right, guys. And also, uh, it also I'm gonna have Randall to send some to me, and I'm gonna post them on the on Hoop Report as well. There we go. There we go. I love that teamwork in the center. I see a lot of teamwork and synergy going on right now, and it's just really great to see people kind of dropping their um. 
me against you and it's more us and we. And I, I love to see that this way. I hate the situation, but I love the, the camaraderie I'm seeing out there. Um, the state association tried to hold the state championships this weekend. You know, me at first we thought it was going to be just uh, family and staff, and then they decided not to do it. And but they did allow the spring sports to play on Thursday and Friday. I got a lot of calls from people saying, "Well, why can't we just move the state championships to Thursday night or Friday night, play them at a high school gym?" There were some states that went ahead and did that and had had state championships in front of family this week. Coach Lewis, your thoughts? Do you think maybe North Carolina should have tried that, or do you think they made the right decision? Well, I think originally they were going to have everything played on Saturday with just immediate family and the players. And I was fine with that. I think, however, when the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, decided to postpone the NBA season, that decision alone sent shockwaves throughout, the, I think, the entire country. Because here's a multi-billion dollar company that just basically put a halt to the NBA season for the time being. And I think it just trickled down. Then you saw it from the NCAA with conference tournaments the ACC tournament, and then the last one to sort of give in and not have it was the NCHSAA. And, um, you know, I think in hindsight, that's probably the right decision. Mm -hmm. I just know recently the Colonial Athletic Conference, they had a conference tournament game where one of the officials was tested positive for the virus. So, you know, better to be cautious. Coach Mitchell, is it possible from a coaching perspective, or how or how difficult is it from a coaching perspective, if say we can go back and play in May, and say they want to have a state championship in basketball mid-May, first of June, how difficult would that be to kind of get the guys that's, and girls ramped back up? That's really tough. I mean, like Randall said, there's going to be gyms that start to close their doors. I know CMS schools aren't letting outside groups come in. So if you train or you practice in those facilities, those are getting closed. I wouldn't be surprised if the YMCA's, the church gyms, all these mm -hmm. these places that kids are, are getting in the gym on their own mm -hmm. are going to be closed. So really the kid's going to be left up to what can you do in your backyard? What can you do in your neighborhood? And mm -hmm. to, to keep you in shape to, you know, who's going to be able to run up and down the floor in a month. If you take a month off, you know, a month off of your season, you know, we see it you know, even during the dead periods that North Carolina requires. You have a dead period, you get your kids back in the gym, and you're like, good gosh, did y'all shoot it all like, <laughs> while you were out? Right. So I think it's going to be really tough to try to get your kids back after a couple weeks away from each other and, you know, which team – I mean, all the teams are in the same, in the same boat. Sure. But which, which team is really going to be able to get them back and, and be able to get back right before they play the biggest game of their – high school careers. Yeah, a lot of the experts we're hearing are saying six to eight weeks before we kind of get back to normalcy. So that would put us in the middle of May and give them a week or two to practice. Could you have a state? It was so weird to have a basketball state championship in June. But would that be really difficult, Coach Mitchell, to get your kids back to inform, to play somebody for such a big I, moment? I think so. But I think because the kids want it so bad, I think you're mm -hmm. going to be able to get them back in a lot easier, knowing that you're actually playing for the, the biggest game of, of the season. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be a little bit different if you were playing, you know, for, well, we just missed a game, we're going to make it up. So, I mean, I, I really wish that we would have got Thursday or Friday, you know, Vance versus Southeast Raleigh. Mm -hmm. picked a, pick a high school and high point and said, look, this is halfway between both. Let's have it here and just pick halfway points between each one of those schools mm -hmm. and just, you know, have a single, a single game at those locations and go ahead and let them play it and, and be done with it. Right. Randall, would it be fair, in, in say, if school got back in middle of May and you really can't do spring sports, but you let the basketball finish, would that be fair to the baseball, the softball, the track athletes to allow the basketball to have a state championship and they don't? I mean, it would be just because they're, they're at, literally at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. We had one more game for the remaining teams left, so I don't think, you know, it would be unfair. I just think as a player it would be hard, especially as a senior, I'm getting ready for college. I'm sure a lot of those guys have, have flipped the switch now, knowing where we're at right now, to be like, all right, I'm getting ready to go. To, I'm getting ready to go to school. So, for instance, a team like North Mac, you get ready to play. You know, it, it, they do end up playing this game at the beginning of June. I think it messes up your focus and concentration level just from a standpoint of, you know, I could be leaving in the next couple of days to go to college, and, and that's kind of where my focus is. Right. That's tough. That's tough. Um, change the topics real quick. There's some really big jobs. We'll stay with Randall. There's some really big jobs open Randall in Charlotte, the kind you don't really see come open. Davidson Day's been open a couple of times, but Charlotte Latin girls' job has come open. Charlotte Country Day's boys' job has come open. South Meg's boys' job has come open. These are like 
you know, prime, you know, real estate type of jobs in, in that country. Day job has been really, you know, the talk of a lot of, you know, even college coaches are wanting to do that. What do you think about these types of jobs coming open and, and the chances that these schools have to make a jump? You don't really see it often. I mean, especially for jobs that's prominent to all come open at, at the same time. It's really shocking. I'm sure the country day job with the things that they have going over there has mm -hmm. been, I'm sure the applicants for that, the list is probably really long. So that's going to be an interesting, you know, job that I'd love to see how they fill it because I'm sure they're going to have a ton of applicants. Um, you know, the same with the Charlotte Latin girl job. I think, you know, that's a job that a lot of people will be looking at and being, going after. And then when you look at the public schools, obviously when you get to play in the league that South Met plays in, <laughs> I'm sure that a lot of people would love the chance to, to go up against AK and, and, and you know, Olympic. Absolutely. Um, Coach Lewis, Country Day's building a $40 million addition to a sports facility. They're building a new auditorium, a new basketball gym. They just really just built a new basketball gym. And the rumor is they're going to build yeah. a, a dome football stadium on top of that. They're really making a big push in athletics. And it sounds like they want to win. This is a team that <laughs> had like three winning seasons in the past 20 years. How big a deal is it for them to get the right person for that job? And could Country Day then become, in a couple of years, one of the dominant programs, a la Providence Day, a Greensboro Day, a Charlotte Christian? Well, the thing about it is they're in a very competitive conference. And, you know, it's one of the toughest. You have Cannon with Jay Rolfe, and you have Brian um, Fields over at um, Providence Day, and then you have um, Sean Brown. The, the list goes on and on. And then you have Chris Berger at Latin. So it's a very competitive conference. I think if they got the right person, they could be competitive. Um, I think the person that would need to be in that position, um, you have to have a coach that will come in and build a winning culture at the middle school and JV level. Um, I think you have to develop a farm system of players that come up through the ranks. You just can't rely on transfers, and it's going to take time. Um, mm -hmm. I think Dwayne Cherry was very, very well liked. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going up against some heavyweights as far as the coaches that you're going to be coaching against day in, day out. I think the uh, lure is the idea of having an Ivy League type education at the high school mm -hmm. level and also take those players and take them to another level. To me, I think in this position, I think you've got to find someone who's going to be young and energetic, someone that can connect with the players but also connect with the students at the school in the community and get behind because it's not going to be an easy job. It's going to take some time to develop a winning program at a school like that. But you see the school is going to put all the resources behind the facility. So if you're going to put that much money into the facilities, you want to make sure you have someone that can come in and make an impact. Randall, you're intimately I, I, familiar with that school and conference. Go ahead. What's your thoughts? I think, I think coach, coach Lewis hit it right on the head. What the most important thing for these private schools is to figure out who can put together a system. I think, you know, when I was growing up, you know, we had feeder teams, which was our seventh and eighth grade team. And our head coach always believed that the most important coach in the whole program after himself was a seventh grade coach because that's where it starts at. And, and right. the first school that's able to develop a team where the seventh grade, the eighth grade, the JV, and the varsity program are all on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. That program's really going to take off and be ahead of the curve with all the other ones. And I, I truly, truly think that that's the biggest thing. If you can find someone who can come in and change the culture and do something like that, it's really going to give the program a boost. Um, like Coach Lewis said, it's, it's going to take some time, um, you know, but you do have to find somebody that young, energetic, that, that really wants to hit the pavement hard and really just work and, and get kids better and, you know, it doesn't necessarily start with, all right, our varsity team next year. You got to take yeah. those young kids that are in the seventh and eighth grade and really start to focus and develop on them and, and let them know what it's like to be a varsity basketball player at that age. Well, yeah, and I want to I want to add one thing to it. I've had a lot of people, you know, call about that and ask me about, you know, can I can I use you as a reference? And I've had a lot mm -hmm. of interest from other high school coaches and also college coaches. And you know, a lot of times people think the first thing they have to do is relax the scholastic entry to the school mm -hmm. but I don't think you also have to do that as well I think what I said before you got to build a farm system from the middle school all the way up and I'm gonna give you a good analogy look at what Dwayne Lewis has done at North Met because he has a great JV program mm -hmm. um, it's a feeder to the varsity and I think you have to start 
with having camps as far as doing skill development at the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade and mm -hmm. really get somebody who wants to be there and be there on a long-term basis. It can't be a short-term um, deal. If someone has to be there for a long period of time, because it's going to take probably, and I'll realize is, you know, four or five years to get that program where it needs to be. It's, they, they have to hit a home run like Carmel hit a home run. Carmel hit a home run when they got Dink and Badgett, and it's led to, you know, several state championships at that level. Mm -hmm. um, for, for Country Day is, is another important step. If they're serious about their basketball program, the next hire has to be a home run hire. No, I right. agree with that, but they're very, very serious because they're going to have, what, nine courts over there and, you know, three weight rooms. I mean, they're, they're you know, you roll your eyes. I mean, they're, they're putting college-level facilities, college-level money, and they do have college-level support over there as well. So this is a very, very interesting hire to see what Marguerite and those guys do over there at Dog Country Day. Coach Mitchell, last week you turned a lot of heads with your discussion of salary. Um, I want you to revisit that a little bit and kind of walk us through some of the realities of what you have to do and suggestions of maybe how ways we can make it better. I think one way definitely, as you mentioned last week, is to have a stair-step system. So a one-year coach doesn't make the same as a 10-year coach. You have to kind of climb your way up. And I think if you did that, there might be more money in the pot to start with. But I don't want to take steal your thunder. Just give us your thoughts. First of all, kind of bring everybody up to speed what you said last week and then take us to the next step this week. Okay. Well, um, Rick actually asked me uh, earlier, how many hours do you think you put into basketball? And so I, I kind of got out my calendar and I was just doing a, a brief look over the past year. And for, for most coaches, I'm not doing anything different than most coaches. So for most high school girls or boys and girls basketball coaches, I clocked around 400 hours of actual gym time. <clears throat> and that, can, that includes preseason, during the season, postseason, and summer. So basketball is year round. And even though a lot of kids play AAU in the summertime, we still work out four days a week. The state allows you to work out Monday through Thursday. And we're in the gym Monday through Thursday because there are some kids that don't play AAU. So, you know, in order to build your, your, your team and everybody's not gonna have to make an AAU team. Mm -hmm. So we stay in the gym year round, roughly about 400 hours. And that does not include your film, your scouting reports, um, checking your kids' academic progress, talking to college coaches, helping your kids get recruited. That's on the side of the 400, the 400 <laughs> hours. 400 hours is just actual gym time in there with your kids. Right. So it is a lot of time. I mean, I've missed my own children's events because I was with my girls. And, you know, it's, it, it's bad because some coaches finally get to the point where, like, you know, I, my family comes first. I'm going to stop mm -hmm. doing this and I need to move on. It's not, it doesn't pay me enough to be away from my children or – you know, whatever's going on in their personal lives. But, um, you know, I think that, that CMS has to, has to find a way to, to pay the coaches a little bit better. Um, football went a couple years ago where they're getting paid an extra, sa an extra paycheck uh, in August, mm -hmm. but no other sports get that. I mean, soccer also starts in August and the fall sports all start in August and nothing against football coaches because you guys do a great job. So don't, don't start <laughs> getting on me of that. <laughs> But I just think that that was a way that CMS made a step in the right direction to help out the football. Right. Just the head coach, the head football right. coach gets that extra pay. But I think there, there has to be something that CMS can do, whether it is start coaches with zero experience and every five years or whatever, mm -hmm. or, you know, do it a tenure thing and, and say, well, the longer you're in our system, you know, give them an extra, an added bonus or, mm -hmm. you know, like I said last week, I've been doing this for 22 years, and I think I've seen two pay increases in the coaching stipend in the past 22 years. Wow. I might crazy. be wrong, but it's, yeah. it's, it's not many, but maybe two. Now, you mentioned so, something about JV last week. You said some schools don't have JV, and maybe that's a way to put more money in the pocket. Right. So mm -hmm. there's, there's quite a few schools that don't have JV girls programs. Mm -hmm. And so if you've already got that money set aside for a JV program or JV coach to be paid and they're not getting they're don't they're not getting paid they're not using that money so just put all that money back into a pot and redistribute it and and my suggestion to redistribute was every team that goes an additional round in the state playoffs which means your season is now even longer than everybody mm -hmm. else's mm -hmm. then give them a little bit extra you know so right now Vance you know they've made it further than anybody else maybe that coach Ryan needs a, a little bit of a bonus there at the end 
Absolutely. Rick, when you hear somebody saying they work 400 hours a year, they make less than $4,000 in the stipend, what do you think? I mean, what's the math on that? Well, it's, it's below minimum wage, and you have to have a deep love for coaching and helping young players to work for that kind of money. And if you really think about it, when I asked Christy about the number of hours and it's less than minimum wage, that doesn't count the time you spend watching film, talking to college coaches, and then the worst thing about the job is the time you have to pay – is listen to the parents complain about playing time. So, yes. you know, so it's it's really a, sometimes it's the award as far as financially is not there. The award is trying to help these young players get to that next level and make an impact in their lives. But you have to be very dedicated to be a high school coach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to ask you guys about the shoe circuits because among all the things that were canceled uh, this week, all three shoe circuits, Adidas, Under Armour, Nike, canceled their uh, spring uh, live period events, and that's where the college coaches can come out and watch, and that also affects you, Coach Lewis, because you put on your own live events here in, in North and South Carolina. How big a deal is that, guys, and, and I'll start with Randall, just for the high school rising senior, this is his biggest time to go out in front of, you know, the coaches, and, and he's going to, they only have three of them, now they're going to take away two. I mean, how big a deal is that? It, it's big. It's a really big deal because, you know, as, as it goes with all the transfers and then moving pieces, you know, a lot of college coaches don't really get to lock in on their 2020s until this period. Obviously, you have the, you know, the elite top 100 kids, you'd say, in the country that have been recruited already. But for those other guys, you know, it's just, this is like the start of the process for them. So for them to get two events taken from them, it really hurts because now if, if it doesn't change, if the NCAA calendar doesn't change, that means you have one event at the end. And it's going to be hard for a lot of college coaches to see these kids. I mean, only having three is difficult enough, but to take two away makes it almost impossible for a lot of these kids. Rick, yeah, you're, in touch with a lot of you're in touch with a lot of coaches, Rick. I just want to hear your perspective. Do you think there'll be any change to the calendar? And what's your reaction on this? I do think, but let me just clarify one thing. Um, it's just the EYBL, Under Armour, and Adidas has stated that they've canceled their circuit for the live mm -hmm. period. The NCAA has not canceled the live period yet. Um, the first live period is April 17th through the 19th, and mm -hmm. the second one is April 24th through the 26th. Mm -hmm. Now, they're leaving the door open. The NCAA is leaving the door open. I think they'll make that decision sometime in April. But mm -hmm. right now, they sent out a note for some of the AAU teams or travel ball teams to say, hey, you need to go ahead and get your paperwork in. You know, you have to go through the NCAA process, um, the gold membership. You have to do all that kind of stuff. You need to go ahead and have that prepared. Because right now, what they're saying is these teams in the EYBL, Under Armour and Adidas, can play in local events. Mm -hmm. So, for example, as it stands of the day, we have our first live period, April the 17th through the 19th, mm -hmm. in Rock Hill at the new Rock Hill Sports and Events Center. We have 10 mm -hmm. courts. That's still on. But I'm going to be honest with you. I think in the next couple of weeks, you'll find out whether that will be you know, still a, a available, still mm -hmm. an option. My gut is saying it's not going to be. My gut tells me that probably when it's all said and done, that there'll be no events probably until, say, May or June. But mm -hmm. I do think what the NCAA will have to do, they'll have to go back and retweet the calendar for everyone. So mm -hmm. they may push it back and put April into May, May into June, June into July, and even July into August to give people mm -hmm. the opportunity to be seen by college coaches. Wow, that'll be different because then you have then some of your two sport athletes to play football might have that decision in August. You know, did I hear I, that the NCAA was going to give everybody a fifth year of eligibility? They gave was that the they, they gave the spring sports guys a fifth year. There's been some talk, and I know a lot of prominent college basketball guys, including Jay Billis and, and Mike Shashevsky, both have advocated to give the winter sports athletes an additional year, but the, the NCAA has not approved an, an additional year for basketball. I do think it opens a little bit of a Pandora's box even for the spring sport athletes because you have so many kids already coming in on scholarship and now you have more kids. Even if they give you enough scholarships to cover all of that, you're a coach. I mean, how are you going to handle playing time? You got a fifth year senior coming back and you got a freshman right. to play. That's, that's, that's kind of tough, but yeah, it's being talked about. But uh, since, you're, since you're talking, Coach Mitchell, just from the girls' perspective, if what Coach Lewis believes is there's not going to be a loud period. How does that affect the girls player who's a rising senior that's looking forward to playing in front of a college coach? I mean, it's, it's definitely the same way on, on the girls' side as it is on the boys' side. I mean, these 
these kids really rely heavily on going to events that have hundreds of college coaches and, and just hoping that you know, I'm going to get seen. So if, if it's down to one and it's, I mean, that's, that's horrible. I, I don't know how, how it's going to work. I mean, you get three days to evaluate 450,000 girls and that play basketball in the country. That's, that's hard. Luckily, luckily on the girls side, the girls, they get an extra one. So they'll have one in April, one in May and then two in July. Okay. So okay. possibly it could only be one that gets canceled on their side. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, you know, it would be interesting if they did change the calendar a little bit because I want to ask Rick and Randall, do you like the, the men's calendar the way they have it currently with the two periods in April and then the high school stuff in June and then the, the, the one period in July? Randall shaking his head, no, you can start. I, I don't like it. I, I understand why they tried to do it. But the reality of it is that this is supposed to be about the kids and giving them the best opportunity to get the exposure that they need to play at the next level. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of coaches that don't even like the, the camps that, they, that the NCAA is running in June. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, the compromise would be two events in July, you know, your two events in April, and, and still run your June camps and kind of just see from there, you know, look at the numbers and see what's mm -hmm. working and what's not working. And kind of just go from there. I think it was it was it was a little preemptive to just go ahead and cut one of the t you know one of those dates away from the boys on the July side last year. Yeah, Coach Lewis, I hear from the coaches that seem to really like the high school. They do. Uh, a lot of periods in June, but what I hear is that I don't like the NCAA camps where they take kids and put them on teams, you know, in in different locations. I think Rock Hill is one this year. Uh, the coaches say, how can I evaluate that? It's really not a fair evaluation. Just your thoughts on the calendar as it is, and do you think it's the right thing? Um, I would like to see keep the two events in April. I think those are good. I think in June, uh, keep the two events in June, but do away with the individual camp and give them two high school evaluation periods. And then also extend into July, give everybody two weeks in July. So you have two in April, two in June, and two in July. Give the college coaches enough time to evaluate these kids properly. Okay, you hold on one second. Hold on, hold on one second. So you're saying two periods with the AU team in April. Yep. Two periods with your high school team in June, and Correct. then another two periods with the AU team in July. I just want people to understand. Right. Go ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the best situation. I do camps, and we do some things that make it a little bit different. Um, we put a three dribble rule in where the kids can only dribble three times in the front court. But the one thing I heard from the NCAA camps was naturally you're going to have a lot of players trying to showcase all their abilities in a very limited amount of time. The play wasn't that – it was a team play. It was all individual, and it was a not a very good way to evaluate players, especially bigs. You know, in those type of camps, the guards are going to dominate the ball, and if you're a wing or you're big, you very get very few touches. So I think, you know, if we could put it back to the high school in two mm -hmm. in June and mm -hmm. us have two as travel ball and two in April, I think everybody would be happy. And I think the college coaches would be happy as well. All right, guys, we're going to 45 second shot clock. We got Coach Lewis and Coach Lewis, you are on the clock. Yeah, I just wanted to emphasize one thing that we talked about earlier is the pre-Christmas event in Charlotte. And I sent out a lot of emails to some of the coaches in the Charlotte area on the public and the private school side. And I've gotten a pretty good response so far on the private school side. Um, it looks like I have Covenant Day, Carmel Christian, Hickory Grove, Providence Day that's expressed a lot of interest in the event. On the public school side, I have Hickory Ridge, Myers Park, and Harding. And I have a few others that's, you know, you know, emailed me back, just wanted more information. but. If these teams do commit, we could have the four best private school teams in the area going up against probably, you know, some of the better public schools. I think Hickory Ridge will be the best team in their conference. Myers Park is always strong. And I think Harding's going to be uh, one of the top teams in their conference next year. And if we can get a Vance or North Beck in the event, I think it will be a great start to a new event in Charlotte. Yeah, we got to get Vance or North Mecca, both of them in there. That'd be phenomenal. Um, I know Vance wants to get the girls in, so maybe you and Coach Mitchell could work something out. And even we got to do a showcase with, you know, Vance and South Mex girls and Providence Day and somebody. It could be a really cool event. So we can, can get that going. 
But uh, guys, I you know I really appreciate you jumping on. I know it's been a weird week with the uh, coronavirus. This was going to be our last episode, but there's so many people saying they want to hear what you guys have to say. I'm going to ask, can we do it again next week? Is that okay? Absolutely. Do it again next Absolutely. week and, 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 and continue talking and you know, hopefully give some people a little bit of normalcy in a very unnormal time. So again, thanks for your, your help. Coach Mitchell, good luck with your food drive tomorrow, and we'll talk next week. Thank you. Sounds good. All right.